Welcome to 2022. Right? In this year, not like you've done in any other year, in this year, and all you say, and all you think, and all you do, do it with intention. Hallelujah. Whenever Bibi wants to come up and sing with us, she's more than welcome anytime. Come on. Whoa. Cause God's intentional, never failing. I know that all things are working for our good, yeah. Cause God's intentional, never failing. Come on, help me say it. All things are working for my good. All things are working for He's our good. And God's never failing. never failing. All things are working for my good. All things are working for our good. God's never failing. never failing. All things are working for my good. All things are working for our good. All things are working for my good. All God is He's intentional. All right now. <laughs> He's intentional and never, ever, ever, never failing. failing. He's intentional. All the trials and tribulations because God's intentional and never ever 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 failing all the lessons that we went through all it's because things all things are working, are working for, my for good. our good every tear that we cry is because all things are working for our good every time never we failing. jump for joy hallelujah because no, all things, things are hallelujah for, my good. Good. for our good because God is intentional all things are working for my good. All things are working for our good. All things are working for my good. All things are working for our good. All things are working for my good. Cause God's intentional. Whoa. So right there, right there. That's your chance for the new year, right? Whoa. Just go ahead and let it out. It's working for me, yeah. It's working for me, yeah. I believe it's working for me. Anybody else it's working for? Anybody else? I don't, I don't have, have to worry because it's working for me, yeah. It's working for me. I believe it's working for me. Come on, sing that with us. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry because it's working for me, yeah. It's working for me. I believe it's working for me. It's working, 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 everything you don't see is working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Because God is intentional. Just put 
intentional, but God is our source. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. God is our source and our power. He gives us everything, everything we need. Hallelujah. God is my source. All right. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. Come on up here. Come on up here. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is our source. God is our source. God is our power. God gives me everything I need. I give thanks. So I give thanks for all my blessings. For all my Joy is my source. Joy is my power. Joy gives me everything I need. So I give thanks. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Joy gives me everything I need. Peace is my source. Peace is my source. Peace is my power. Peace gives me everything I need. So I. during the holiday of the community being closed and rehearsed and gave a lot of energy. Wanda Nero Butler has an amazing opportunity to be at home with her family for an extended time. We want to give her some love for everything that, uh, that she does as well. I see some new faces today, or I'm not used to seeing you with the mask on, so you may not be new at all. Um, but that being said, we're just grateful that you are here. I'm Temple Hayes. I'm the transitional spiritual leader here at First Unity Spiritual Campus, and I feel that our team is doing a wonderful job of handling change, you know, of handling change. And so I want to thank you for wearing your mask. Um, I need you to understand how important that is that everyone wears a mask um, because I understand in our humanity no one wants to do it. But as an example, um, a Unity community just last week, uh, two or three people got COVID and they had to close the whole community down. We don't want that, do we? No, we don't want to close the whole community down. So unless you have a medical reason for not wearing one, we don't like it either. Here, that's the thing. Okay, are we good to go on that? Thank you for, thank you for your love on that. So let's enter now in, into the place where we hold the energy and the presence because we just sang that God is our source. Our problems aren't our source. Our family isn't just our source. They're relatable sometimes. 
But who's our source? God is our source. So we're going to enter into that dimension today and see the value of the power of the spoken word, the power of letting go, and the power of a releasing. Yes? And so what a celebration. So we're going to call in the great invocation by our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, and just hold the words with me. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. Wow. And so it is. So these songs are what we call heart songs to get us into reflecting from what we're going to release on what we're going to release and what we're going to bring in. So, if you know the songs, go ahead and sing along with us, okay? Because the more that you sing and send it out, the more spirit can work it through you. All right? All right. I start my day with love when I start my day Everything I do is infused with love. I start my day with love. When I start my day with love, everything I do is infused with love. I start my day with love. When I start my day with love, everything I do is infused with love. I start my day. Joy, 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 joy. 
day with peace I start my day with joy And I feel a sweet release I start my day with love I start my day with peace I start my day with joy And I feel that sweet release I start my day with love I start my day with peace I start my day with joy And I feel that sweet release We have Eric Enfield back on the piano today. <laughs> We're so delighted to have him back with us and get a, take a time after the service to give him a, a warm unity welcome. We appreciate that. How many of you have done a burning bowl before? All right, many of you have. Um, they invite me to explain uh, the process here just because we don't want to get the papers that are going into the fire confused, okay? So uh, the one, and it's not to uh, be facetious or insult anyone's intelligence, but we do get excited. And I know that probably some of you do feel you have enough to fill this whole page of what you're letting go of. But this is what goes into the fire pit, the small paper, yes? The I release and I let go part. And that would be a safety thing. And we're fortunate that we have the science of mind ministers, the practitioners, the unity chaplains, and other ministers of other faith. They're going to be surrounding that fire pit today when we get to that part of the service. But this is the kind of thing that many people for many years to come tell stories about what they let go of at Burning Bowl and what they envisioned into their future during Burning Bowl. So let's mind, uh, be mindful of ourselves to know that we are going to put our whole selves in. This is truly a hokey pokey moment. Yes, we're going to turn ourselves around because we're going to put our whole selves in. Do all of you have what is needed, your little toolkit for the burning bowl. If you do not, would you please stand so the ushers can find you. Even the puppies, I think, have them. Right? Some of the dogs have them. All right, very good. We want to make sure that you, you have that. And so it is, right? No, he, didn't, he doesn't give me any notes anymore. Okay, there we go. That's it. Release or let go. Release me. <laughs> There was a time in my life I thought I'd have to do it all for myself Didn't think the love of God was sufficient Didn't know the grace of God was at hand But now I can say you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day. You've got to let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. And this is what you have to say. Oh, 
Yes, I'm only here for God. No more, no more. Yes, yes. I had a lot going on back there. <laughs> Thank you, singers. I want to encourage the people at home, if you will take the time to grab a piece of paper so you can be involved with um, today's service. Grab a piece of paper and be ready to write your letter to God and to uh, release and let go. I love seeing all these faces. We're seeing more and more people return home. Thank you very much. This past week, I was doing some studying. And it was about releasing. And I was studying in the book of John. And it was the story. I'm going to paint a picture for you. Je- Jesus, they had buried Jesus in the tomb. And Mary was standing at the tomb, wailing. Paint you a picture. Woe is me. Woe is me. Where have they taken the great master? Woe is me. Now, you may ask, why are you telling us an Easter story? (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you, Temple. But the metaphysical beauty of this story is actually not about the, the resurrection. It's about, because this happens, Jesus, the Christ consciousness at that point, appeared behind Mary and said, why are you welling? It's the Christ consciousness that's always standing behind you saying, why are you wailing? Woe is me, woe is me. And the beautiful thing is the Christ consciousness in Mary awoke. And when she went and told the other disciples what had happened, and it wasn't about the Jesus, but it was about the Christ consciousness consciousness that had welled up in her. So, that's your free part. But I thought, you know, so often we have the hardest time letting stuff go because we become complacent. We stay in marriages for 25, 30 years that aren't good because we become complacent. We go to Christmas traditional services with our family because we've become complacent and we're miserable in it because we're standing at the tomb saying, woe is me, woe is me. I have to deal with my family one more Christmas Eve. What I'm asking you to do is to answer the Christ consciousness that's standing behind you, always pushing you into your destiny. And what doesn't work for you, I'm telling you this, asking you this, sharing with you. As a counselor, let it go. Let it go. The things that aren't working out in your life, let it go. The job that's not working for you, let it go. Because you're just standing at the tomb saying, woe is me, but you're not making a change, even though the Christ consciousness is pushing you into your destiny because you remain at the tomb door. So I encourage you today, let it go. So if you put both your feet on the floor, center your energy. And you don't have to close your eyes for this one because I don't want you to get sleepy. But you're going to start letting it go. So practice wiping that energy off of you. Wipe that energy off of you. If it's on your head, surround yourself and wipe it off. Wipe it off. Wipe it off. If someone has to do it off your back, let the person next to you wipe it off your back. A place that I ask you always to do is never forget to wipe the energy off the soles of your feet because you don't want to take your past into your destiny. So I'm going to encourage you 
from now on, from this point on, practice letting go. When life gets you down and life gets you out, whether it be people, situations, things, things you've done yourself, practice wiping that energy off of your body. You have that ability at all times. Wipe that energy off of your body. Wipe it off your head. Wipe it off your back. Practice that. It's this week and going forward. Let it go. And as our piano player still continues to play, thank you very much. Aren't you glad Eric's here today? So with your small slip of paper, don't put your letter to God in there, on your small slip of paper, write some things that you need to let go today. Because this is, I always say, if you don't write it down, it never happens. So I encourage you to write it down. Be bold. If you need to write someone's name down, it can even be your mama and your daddy. If they're holding you to the tomb opening, to the tomb door, let it go. If you need to write a, a situation down, write that situation down. Because your act of writing this down is listening to the Christ consciousness. As Jesus said to Mary, I must go away so the Holy Spirit can come. You must let it go for your situation to come. You must let it go for your triumphant self will come forward. And I love that story because it was well, most, most pastors teach that story as an Easter, Easter story. But metaphysically, there's so much more beauty to that. And I love our brother Jesus because he did that with a lot of folks. I always say it kind of smacked them when they weren't expected. <laughs> wake up. Wake up to yourself. Wake up to the God within you. And when you write this down, do this with all your consciousness to seriously let things go. And you that are watching on home, be bold in what you write. If you need to let a spouse go, a loved one go, a situation go, maybe you're blocking your own financial breakthrough. Let go whatever's clogging that flow, whatever's clogging that vortex. Let it go. And I'm kind of just patiently looking around the room and just seeing if heads are up. And letting go, I know with myself, I have to consciously pray that every day. Trust. Letting go is a good thing. I always say, you know, when I take up the offerings, sometimes I always say, you can't give or you receive with your hand closed. You've got to give. It's the same thing. It's you've got to give. You've got to let, you've got to often let things go so you can receive more. You'll be surprised. You'll let things go and the windows of heaven will open up and pour out a blessing that you cannot comprehend that you can contain because that's a promise of the creation. And I think everybody, if we will um, actually recite our letting go statement, our affirmation. I now let go of the complaining and focus on my blessings. I let go of negative self-talk and know that I am God's beloved. I let go of what is not working and celebrate the law of life working in me. I see beyond appearance and know God is good all the time. And if God is good all the time, that means you are good all the time. <laughs> Oh, that was a wonderful teaching. I just love that. Thank you.
Yes, that was, that's, a, that's one of those that goes in the minister notes of use this. That is powerful, Reverend Richard. Let's give him some unity love. Um, this is the day that also we really thank the ushers. So I tell you, they are nonstop. So if, would you stand, please, and let us give you some unity recognition. We really appreciate your help. At this time, I'm going to invite the Science of Mind ministers, the practitioners, the unity chaplains to go to one of the fire pits. We have them at both locations. I invite you to intuit it that uh, you will have out there. And the beauty of this process is that all of them will be holding sacred space. They pray for you. They, if you want to have a special individual prayer, but we have them on both sides of the, uh, of the building. And the ushers are going to come to you. And um, our invitation is that you will simply wait until the ushers come to your row before you exit the building, okay? So we can have a flow. Yes. All right. I'm going to invite the singers to come out, and um, the ushers will come to you momentarily. Thank you, Barb. As you're releasing, it's the time to praise. Hallelujah. So let's give all glory to God for everything that's being released and let it go. Hallelujah. All right. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our 
as with everything in life, when you let go of anything, you create a space, yes? yes? And so where we get to do our Christ consciousness work is we are aware of things that we want in the new things now to be in that space called the law of manifestation, the secret of your desires. But we are the gatekeepers of our own possibilities, yes? And so what tends to happen in our humanity is we let go of something, you know, like somebody will quit smoking and they pick up drinking, you know, or they quit smoking one thing out of a box and roll up something in another. We won't go there. I know I'm not talking about me. That was, a, that was many lifetimes ago. But that being said, there's a tendency in our humanity to build upon what Reverend Richard was saying is that we want to get back to comfortable, and so when we see something coming, like a, a new relationship or something else, we want to be mindful that it's not just like what we had happen, you know? Because we can fill that space, right? I had that happen to me just uh, recently, as aware as I feel like I'm very attentive, you know, where my wife and I are moving to California, and a unity community said, oh, come and be with us, and I went, sure, why? You want to know why? Are you, do you care? <laughs> it's very familiar to me, and I went, sure, but I went, no, I want to do something different. Don't you want to do something different? Don't you want to... See what is now in front of you that you can expand upon and build that's new. And that's what goes on this letter. And you become the gatekeeper because when something starts feeling like the old patterns coming through, you can tell your friends and your committee, have your eye on me to make sure that I don't just keep doing the same old things that I've already done. Are you with me? New and exciting. And so you want to know that the power of your written word is everything. I'd like you this week, I'd like to give you an assignment. I would like for you to Google John Goddard, G-O-D-D-A-R-D, that wrote out in his lifetime 127 things that he wanted to achieve. And I mean like swim in all the major world rivers, you know, ride in a blimp, I mean, do the impossible, climb all the world's largest mountains. I'm not talking about, you know, have 30 days without complaining. I'm talking about big dreams. And so he wrote down the what he was seeking, what he was seeking. When you are in the how, you are already questioning your dream. Most people live in the how. That's not possible. I don't have the money. It's not in my DNA. My parents only had an average income. Oprah lives in California, not here. She won't see me at Publix. The, when you are into the how, you are in your head. Point to your head, put your hand on your head. When you're in the how, you're in your head. Your job is the what, and that's your heart. Put your hand on your heart, that's your what. So if you haven't put those big things on your letter to God yet, put them in. You want to put the return address with your name and the to address, who you're sending it to, your address is in both places. So no matter what, you're going to get this letter. And our team of people will mail at random this letter sometime in 2022. Yes? We say what? And we allow God to say how. And so as our amazing voices are, are singing um, a song, when you are complete with your writing, you can gently nudge to pass it down to the center aisles and the aisles on each side. Okay? Okay? Okay. Blessed always, blessed
released, we wrote our letter to God. What now? What next? Hopefully, we release some things, some thoughts, beliefs, some narratives that are no longer serving us, some things that we do not need in this next season, like a fur coat in Florida. Hopefully, we did that. What do we do next? We stay the course. And just in case you needed some help, I've got some instruction for you. Attention, passengers. The captain has turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. We ask at this time that you stow all carry-on items and that your seat backs and tray tables are in the upright position. All right. We intend to fly at full altitude and at full speed. So if there's anything you need to make your stay more enjoyable, ask and it is given. As a reminder, everything you need and everyone you need is on board. We recognize that you do have a choice in choosing airlines, and so we thank you for flying with First Unity Airways. That's what's next. Everything that you released, leave it in the bowl. I checked with Matthew, he's sealing it off. So if any of those things show up in your 2022, it's because you went and dug them out. In your letter to God, live every single moment with the awareness of what you wrote down. We're connected to one. We're connected to that unlimited source of abundant good. There is no lack, there is no evil planned for you in 2022, and so it is. Hello, am I on? Oh, there I go. Uh, ushers, if you'll bring those forward, we hadn't planned on doing this, but I just feel led to do this. Move quickly, move quickly, bring the envelopes forward, ushers. And you can stay with them. And there's some stray ones coming in. Besides Easter and Christmas service, I think this is one of our top sacred times. And ushers, if you just step here <clears throat> as a symbol, and they're still coming in, they're still coming in, they're still rolling in. This is a demonstration of how much you believe in the power of God in your life. If you'll just stretch your hands towards them all. Creator of the universe, we've taken the time to write down our needs, our wants, our desires, because you already know them. But you know that you have said many times in many of the prophetic teachings, when two or more join together, so it is. So dear heavenly creator of this universe, you have a house full of people who are in agreement for this to come together because we believe in you. And if we believe in you, that means we believe in ourselves. God, I'm not talking to a heavenly creature, creation that's out there outside my reach. I'm turning my intentions, my focus on the God within and this demonstration is me taking the step because you are a co-creator. Not a creator, but a co-creator in my destiny. I welcome the co-creation in my life, through my life, as me, through me. God, I receive everything that you have in store for me. I receive all the blessings. I receive all the healings. I no longer pull back. I no longer hide my head in shame. I no longer hide. Because I need to walk upright. I need to walk with my chest out. Because God, you are within me. And you said that the world is mine, the universe is mine. So today, we're in agreement 
And so it is. Yes. Oh. Yes. You know what? I'm going to say, when I was a little boy at six years old, not six years old, in sixth grade, my sixth grade teacher pulled me by the top of the, hair, of the head. Needless to say, my mama almost beat her butt for it. But she pulled the hair of the top of my head and said, you'll never amount to anything. But you know what? <laughs> Woo! If she could see me now. Don't let anyone speak doubt into your life. And if you're at home watching his home, the same power of God is within you. Mm. It makes me happy. Because you know what? I no longer apologize. I no longer apologize for the gifts that God has put inside me. And today, moving forward, you no longer apologize. Give yourself a round of applause for that. You no longer apologize. Live with the Christ consciousness within you. Yes. Yes. Ahead, mm. yes. Lord and child. Well, now I've got to wrangle that back in and go to some business. And this business part of it is just, no, I need to wipe these tears off. This giving is just as important as all the rest of it. I love that there were people across the country who took advantage of this past week of sending a special love offering in before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Because they listen to that small, still small voice yeah. with inside them. You know what? I've been around the church world for a long time. And the people who don't enact on that are the first ones to say, well, you know, the only thing they talk about at church is money. Mm. You want a nice, pretty, spiritual community, but it doesn't happen for free. We don't keep the lights on for free. We don't play the landscapers for free. This is your community. You get out of it what you put into it. And given to this ministry, because we have someone who's repeatedly spoken to us from the Philippines, that's because you cared to give enough to keep this ministry moving forward and letting the people around the world hear it. And you should give yourself a big round of applause for that because this is your community. Lord, a child. I'm in a hot mess today, haven't I? You can text to give during the week at 727-800-3493. It only took me 10 years to remember that number. If you want to give during the week, oh, ushers, I'm sorry. Y'all don't need to listen and wait, wait on me. Y'all know what to do. Give our ushers some love. You know, these people, these people come and volunteer because they're here to serve you in your community. If you want to give during the week, you can text to give. You can also, too, if you have the app, and I hope that you have the app downloaded now on your phone, the little yellow heart you can give right there. So you can also write us a letter <laughs> and give that way. If you'll stand on your feet, we'll do our abundance of prayer. And this, again, I'm going to go back to what I always say. When you get to the part that I open my mind and I open my heart to give and receive, that receiving is part of the promise of the creation of this universe. Okay, let's go. The abundance of God is my infinite source. I now open my mind and my heart to give and receive. All God's good all God's prosperity, all God's abundance, as God as my source, all things are possible, and so it is. No. 
Do you feel like you've released some things? I feel a little bit lighter. My paper was filled. I didn't go on to the back, but it was filled. And I asked Dr. Bev to make sure that it was completely incinerated, Kate, just to make sure. I want to say welcome and thank you to those watching in Colorado, in New York, and in the Philippines. We thank you for joining us. And another thank you for all of you, because you made our angel tree a success. Amelia's not here, but I was here during the week while she was getting bikes ready and packing up gifts, and you all made it possible for so many people to have a wonderful Christmas, and we are grateful. What's happening this week at your first Unity? I am so glad you asked. This Wednesday, January 5th, our Wednesday meditation, 6 p.m., is going to be with a very, very special psychic medium and energy healer. Lisa's going to be here, and I'm excited to be in her space this week. So we invite you to come out for that. Next week, the 12th, is our premiere. We are never alone. The focus is on suicide prevention. It's a real thing. I know it feels like the world has gotten back to normal, but there are some people who are still struggling emotionally and mentally, and we want to do our part. We want to raise awareness, and so we invite you to come out for the film screening. Of course, it features our very own Reverend Temple Hayes, humanitarian and actress Gabriella Wright, Deepak, you may have heard of him, and of course, Michael Bernard Beckwith. You don't have to leave right after the service. We invite you to join us in Spice Routes, where everything is delicious. I know because I eat there a lot. So you can join us. The unity in the community can continue. And all the way, she's in Portugal. She's not here. But can we give a round of applause for our own Carolyn Lebanowski? Today is her birthday. We're so grateful. Phenomenal COO led us through a pandemic. And now I ask that you would stand with me and let's sing our peace song. Let's remember and go into this year knowing what our focus is.
Let us affirm together our unity prayer. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light. Love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And in the spirit of Ubuntu and our beloved Desmond Tutu, we say in that interconnected woven fabric that we call humanity, I am because we are. We are because I am. And so it is. Bless you. Have a great week. We are family. Hallelujah.